What's up, tricksters, and welcome to another episode of Raise to Immortal series, a series where I'm teaching you my best radiant tips, tricks, and strategies for raise. Last episode, we got placed in Platinum 1 after winning 4 out of 5 placement matches, and today it's time to showcase you why Raze is an S tier agent that you need to main for solo queue grind and easy double rank ups. If you have any questions about Raze, feel free to ask me down in the comments, or you can join my Discord server for professional Valorant coaching. Other than that, let's hop into our first game, baby. Now, this gaming session, we're starting with the most important tip for Raze. Your utility is primarily a pressure-making movement and recon tool that allows you to take easier gunfights. You can notice in this round how I'm consistently trying to pressure enemies with my abilities in order to have easier time killing them and creating the space for my team. As soon as I see that enemy Sky is stuck on the right side of window, I'm using my nade to pull her out from that position, but unfortunately she had enough time to pull out her flesh, make my eyes bleed and reposition. Here we decided to continue our aggression towards Seaside, and as we're taking garage control, I'm using one of my satchels inside of the window to prevent enemies from peeking or killing my teammates, and then I made one small mistake. Instead of following my Ashtra, most aggressive teammate that is taking bombsite control, I thought that it would be a good idea to send my Boombo through C-Link in order to apply another layer of pressure onto enemies and to potentially keep my location a secret. But this whole push took us a lot of time that enemies have used to rotate and pinch us, so this is what actually happened. Thankfully, enemy peaks were not synchronized at all and they didn't play a proper refray game, which allowed me to isolate them into 1 vs 1 gunfights. Whenever you want to fight enemies with your teammates, always pay attention on keeping a proper distance between each other and ask yourself if you're holding a proper angle to refrag your allies. In this example, if Jet, Omen and Sky all peek together at once, they would have made a mashed potato out of me. Now, let's rewind back on that omen kill. Do you remember what I was teaching you about satchels in the previous episode of this series? Exactly! Whenever you can anticipate enemies or you hear them pushing you, use your satchels to displace their movement and cross their placement for an easy kill. And this is why you need to hit that subscribe button right now, leave a like and make sure to watch all of these videos from beginning to the end, if you don't want to miss some important information for your grind. Also, on my Discord server you can access the Raise Rank playbook, which is gonna help you a lot when it comes to mastering this agent on every single map. But another tool that you can use to master agents' utility usage and lineups is Valorant Tracker by TRN, which you can download for free by using my link from the description. This application allows you to analyze yourself and to always understand on which fields you can improve as a solo queue player, and in my private coaching sessions, this is the first thing that I analyze for my students. This software is also extremely useful to analyze your teammates and enemies during your live games, because already at the start, based on these statistics, you can instantly see which players are the weakness of yours or enemy team, which can increase your chances of winning if you use this data in the smart way. But beside all of that, Valorant Tracker also has integrated agent guides and lineups that can be extremely useful for players that are learning new characters, or that simply want to increase their game knowledge while they're actually playing the game. For an example, if you're playing Raze on Icebox and you have no idea how to use her utility on that map, in between rounds you can simply click on Guides, find Raze, select the map that you're playing, and voila! You have some short guide and lineups that you can implement on both attackers and defender side in real time, while majority of these guys have my coaching seal of approval. Even though this video is sponsored by Valorant Tracker, which I highly appreciate and it will help me a lot if you use my link from the description to download the app for free, I truly believe that this software can give you an advantage in your solo queue games and help you to improve faster. Now, at the end of this specific round, I was left in a 1v1 scenario against enemy race that was on C site, so I simply decided to pick up the spike and rotate all the way to A. And whenever you're playing these 1v1 post plans, always try to plant the spike on some extremely overexposed location where enemies have no idea from which angle you're going to defend the spike and peek them. They should be the one feeling the pressure, and you should be the one controlling the outcome of that round. Also, in these post plan scenarios, proper positioning is crucial for your success. Essentially, what you need to reduce are the factors of luck and timing. If I played anywhere on the bomb side, there are just too many angles and positions from which enemy rays can easily surprise me, and that's why there are three reasons why I decided to play deep in a short. Number one, from this position I can fully cover the flank from behind, which means that the remaining enemy can only engage me from the bomb side. Number two, I'm only exposed from two angles, where I can see both of them within my side and enemy cannot backstab me at all. Number three, the spike is planted in a way where I don't see it from short, so it shouldn't be logical for enemies that I'm playing in this specific position. Come on. 
going. Now attack her side was easy, but on defense we had a bit of problems closing out this match because my teammates were always giving enemies the first blood, and in these type of games, predicting enemies' next move and doing faster rotations is crucial. But what is also crucial is abusing as many different elevated off angles as possible when you're playing movement type of agents such as Raids. <laughs> Two ultimate kills. The next game on Split was a pure team diff, and to be honest, we're probably not going to lose a single game on this map, since it's one of the best maps for Raze. Also, after just 6 wins and 1 lost game, this is what happened, my friends. Try to put some pressure on mid, destroy the... Oh, we have a rank up. Double rank up already? Okay. Now, another map where Raze is an absolute rank up machine is Lotus, essentially on all of the claustrophobic maps, which is extremely good because of her damaging and pressure-making kit. Like for an example, in this round on defense, enemies are trying to plant the spike on seaside, and with my nade, I can easily pull out that enemy from this cover and take a kill. Or we can simply take this kill with a definitely intentional stun and nade combo that was super giga coordinated without any communication. Grenade! Spike planted. One down. Reloading. Oh, Ooh, that's a good kill. One enemy remaining. Bro, raise on Lotus is insane, man. In EU lobbies, we don't need communication through microphones. We have a telepathic, mentally unstable connection. Wait a minute, charlatan! Did you only buy Sheriff in the first round on defense? Yes, I am! Basically on Lotus, A site is our default site on defender's side, and I will always play it in the first round, but I will never fight aggressively for A main control, because in the first round it's almost impossible to take it, due to lack of utility and better guns, but also keeping the control of it is extremely hard, and that's why I play this round in the same way that I played it in my Jet to Immortal series. I simply buy Sheriff, I start my round by holding the stairs position for one or two shots, and I'm trying to abuse as many tight pixel angles and off angles to potentially get some easy body shot kills. Anyways, Lotus is literally built out of paper and there are so many wallbang positions, so you don't need anything else except a Sheriff and Nade for the first round on defense. But you can also play this round with a Ghost and Satchel, or with your usual loadout which is Classic, Light Shield and two Satchels. Now, in the fourth round of this game, I've already pulled out the ultimate elo stick in Valorant, and it's time for Operazione! This is how I usually hold the aim and cross from the stairs position. I hug the wall that is in front of me while crouching down, I narrow all of these angles into one, and I place my crosshair based on which gun I'm using, or how enemies usually peeked me in this specific area of the map. This angle holding technique is a bit more unconventional, but it is extremely effective when you already have a huge angle perception advantage over your enemies. And there are multiple benefits of holding angles like this, such as it's highly unlikely that enemies will have a proper crosshair placement for you, only half of your body is exposed which makes you a harder target to kill, and the list goes on. After every kill, one of my usual habits is to keep my location a secret and reposition onto some other angle where enemies might not expect me with Operator. But right now, I've got the information from my teammates that enemies are pushing B site, so it's time to help them with the ELO stick. Yeah, they're doing the same. After this kill on Sky, enemies did some kind of a fake on C site, they rotated onto A, and only God knows what they actually did in this round, but it was effective enough to put me in this 2v3 scenario. After my breach died, I've used this nade to delay enemies push onto A site, which is gonna buy me enough time to rotate over stairs and peek enemies into a long range duel with Operator. After that kill on Fade, I heard that enemy re satcheled into bomb site, so I'm using one of my satchels to keep my location a secret and to make enemies think that I'm still coming from this stairs position, but what I'm actually doing is buying myself some time to rotate onto A tower. That fake satchel actually made enemy raise waste her ultimate, but this is where we make one crucial mistake. 
In these 2v2 scenarios, you always want to stick together and fight on a refrain potential. You don't really care if enemies plan the spike on A side, B side, or G side. As long as we can fight together, we have higher chances of winning this full by round. We cannot allow enemies to take 1v2 or 1v1 duels, and usually, if you allow your teammates to fight alone, this is how it ends up in Valorant's solo queue. Unfortunately, in ranked environment, you never know with what type of monkeys you're playing. Is it a chimp or a gorilla? But one thing is for certain, in this type of 2v2 and 3v3 situations, you always want to fight together with your teammates and to focus on compensating every single possible mistake that they might make. But let's focus now on this 1v2 retake. In these scenarios, you really need to take your time when it comes to proper angle clearing and pathing. Clear as many positions as possible before tapping the spike so that you have an approximate idea of where the enemies can be at that moment of time. I'm fucking stupid, bro. Enemy After this kill on Raze, chances are that enemy Omen is either in B main or C link. Since I don't have a lot of time to defuse the spike, I'm using my nade in C link, gambling my crosshair placement for B main and trying to get at least a half defuse before this Omen picks some kind of a fight with me. Four. I defuse things in my sleep. Unfortunately, I was a bit too slow on this retake, but the real question is... Charlotte, then how did you know enemies' locations during this retake? It is simple, I have used my brain. When and where is the last time during this round that enemies saw me? When I killed Fade from the stairs. But when I was going for retake, I activated rotating doors on A site, which allowed me to keep my location a secret. By opening these doors and clearing the B tower position, I knew that at least one enemy is probably gonna play in A link. And after getting this kill on raise, it was logical that enemy Omen is either in B main or C link position. He could have done some crazy rotation on B tower as well, but it's highly unlikely that enemies below Immortal have the confidence to go for such play. Also, remember my friends, if you're playing a 2v1 postplant, please play together on a refrag potential as well. I almost clutched this round because of the same mistake that I did with my fade. I guess the whole Valorant can be summarized in one specific tip. Respect the numbers and play a proper refrag game. Now on defense of Lotus, the only times when you don't want to fight for aim and control are the first round and whenever enemies are playing some kind of an eco round. In every other round, you should fight aggressively for this area of the map, especially if passive gameplay is not working for you, because once you take the aim and control, one player can simply defend this choke point, while the rest of the team can fully focus on B and C sites. When you allow enemies to have free control of aim in, the rounds become much harder, because they can easily do some kind of splits onto A site or B site. Also with raise, taking aim and control is a piece of cake. Just remember that you always want to adapt your utility usage based on what you see from the enemies and based on overall team compositions. During this game, enemy raise and omen were never satcheling or teleporting towards rubble, and that's why in this round I've simply combined my nade with fade C's at the choke point, and I pushed from the right side position without satchel for some easy ultimate kills. Grenade. Take hold. Now, if enemies were teleporting, dashing or satcheling towards rubble, then I would use my nade behind rubble and double satchel towards the left side position. No. GG. GG, boys. <laughs> Judge better than the Rosa ultimate. The most with the utility. The next game on Sunset, I just prayed to Valorant Elder Gods, abused all of the tips that I've already explained in the previous episodes, and got a free win. One enemy remaining. Attackers win. Do not behind fight you, behind us again. Is there is there even a fix for this? But the game after on Haven was a pure comedy central and a showcase of Ray's true power. Here I'm using a nade in garage to stop Casper the Ghost from splitting the seaside, and you might ask why? Because my team has told me that there's a lot of enemies pushing through garage. <laughs> One enemy remaining. Remember, my friends, the worst thing that you can do in Valorant is giving ghost comms. You should only give callouts when you're at least 90% certain when it comes to some information. 
Quick disclaimer, no mice for her during the process of making this series. I utterly love and respect Hans. In this round, enemies took B site. They're planting the spike and I'm trying to use my Sova's ultimate pressure to potentially get some easy kills with my own ultimate and double satchels. But a wild sage wall appears. Remember that Rhea's ultimate has a huge explosion radius, so using it like this, close to an enemy, might also grant you a kill. Since I only have Operator for this retake, I need to play a bit slower and wait to see if any enemy is gonna make some kind of a mistake. But I'm still pushing together with my teammates and making sure that I have a proper distance to refrag them. Blind. This Yoru kill was a bit lucky, but the more things you try, the more success you're going to find. If you never try anything, you won't get lucky at all. And remember when you're playing a retake against Killjoy, always make sure to destroy her nano swarms before going for a spike defuse. Ha 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 ha! retake! Now in first round on attacker side of Haven, usually the best idea against enemies that have two sentinels is to do a 5 man push onto A site. Also, during this round, pay attention how I'm pathing through A long area of the map, because this is how I do it with every single agent. And with Raze, I'm always buying classic, light shield and two satchels in the first round, because my primary goal is to use my nade for the back site and double satchel under A tower position, in order to create space for my team and apply pressure onto enemies. He's playing, uh, serious. Grenade! Uh, serious, uh, like... Okay. Remember, my friends, that when you're playing controllers, precision of your smokes is far more important than speed. Because misplaced smoke is gonna cost you much more than a smoke that is a bit slower. Take your time for proper utility usage. Now in this 2v3 postplant, I was 100% certain that enemies are probably waiting for someone to flank us, because they let us plant the spike for free, and their retake was extremely slow, but this is what actually happened. No one fuck me, Last yes. Player standing. One enemy remaining. For me. A bit of an NPC round, but we take those as well. In this round, I did the same execute since this is one of the best raised executes for A site, but the only difference is this boom bot. Whenever you're pushing choke points or main areas and you expect enemies to peek you or pop flash you, feel free to use your boom bot to pressure them back or to simply scout for the enemies. My ult spike Red. down A. Play the space. We get the tip. Finally, good smokes, bro. Out city. This game is the proof that you should never give up and never surrender. Our Reyna was toxic and left the game in the 4th round on defender side, but we still managed to end up 7-5 on defense, which made the enemy sage also rage quit because they were losing 5 versus 4. Remember, my friends, Valorant is more of a mental game and a game of confidence. If you have poor mentality, poor attitude and no confidence at all, you can't expect to rank up and improve. It's all about the mindset. Now, traveling back onto Sunset, whenever enemies are stuck in some corner, you can always pull them out with your nade for a kill like this. Grenade! See ya! Spike planted. Ugh. Wait, I'm gonna hear you. Thank you. One right. <sighs> low, low, low. Satchel up. And always remember when you're close to enemies to use these jiggle throw satchels onto them and make them fly, baby. Satchel out. Reloading. Reloading. What blood? This round is a proof that no one is perfect and Radiant players are humans just like everyone else. Market probably. Planted. <laughs> and here's one very important mental tip. 
You should never feel afraid of facing any opponent in Valorant, because fear will guarantee your loss. On the opposite side of the screen, there's a human just like you, and if he reached a specific level in his gameplay, you can probably achieve it as well. High elo players are not machines, and we all have some kind of a weakness. Now on attack, my Sky refused to use her recon utility to clear main areas of the map, and since we don't have any other recon tool, I'm forced to use my own utility in order to clear these positions, such as this nade for B main. Whenever your teammates are not clearing these areas of the map properly, use your nade and boombo to pressure enemies back and make sure that your teammates are living a happy life until we reach choke points and execute bomb sites. When you're playing Sunset on attack, always be aware that enemies might lurk behind you, because this map is really small and going for fast lurks to backstab enemies is a very common play. Nice. Essentially, whenever you don't have a sentinel on your team to cover the flank and your executes are getting in delayed, protect your team's butthole. Going up! My ult's ready. Grenade. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. <gasps> now, if you already want to go for these lurks on defender side, you cannot really do them 24/7 because you will become way too predictable. Sky's out. There's only around 10% of times when lurking and flanking is actually a good idea, and you need to pick a perfect moment of time for these plays. One enemy remaining. Finally, bro, I killed with this shit. Enemy Sky was really persistent when it comes to flanking, even though I'm punishing her every single time. One enemy remaining. Remember that most of the time it's simply better to play with your teammates on a refresh potential. I guess some people never learn from their mistakes, which is one of the biggest problems for Valorant players. You need to consistently adapt your playstyle based on what your teammates and enemies are doing, and you cannot repeat 24-7 something that isn't working for you. Maybe you can flank one time, maybe you can flank two times, maybe you can flank three times, but doing it four and five like chill with all. Unfortunately on the attacker side, my teammates started trolling a bit, enemies were playing well, so in the end we didn't manage to pull out this victory. But after 9 wins and 2 losses, we're still one game away from Diamond. Let's see if we can maybe get a triple double rank up into Ascendant and finish this series in a record-breaking time. But hey, there's still plenty of tips, tricks and strategies that I need to teach you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you, my dear tricksters, in the next video.